This is part two of translating trig graphs. The previous video showed you how to move things right left, which is the phase shift, and how to move things up down, which is the sinusoidal axis. Now we're gonna throw in a period change on top of the shifts. Negative three plus four times the sine of two times the quantity theta minus pi. I'm gonna go through and label everything. You don't have to, but I recommend that you do. If we were in class, I would give you a little table and ask you to find the amplitude period, whatever. So if I would do it in class, we're gonna do it here. The amplitude is four. This is going to be shifted down three. So my sinusoidal axis is sine of theta equals negative three. Okay, and then B is two, therefore the period is pi. And then lastly, this is the shift right pi units. Okay, so this is my starting point. Okay, so now I'm going to um, go ahead and graph this. So if the period is pi, you may want to determine your intervals. It's up to you. Um, pi divided by 4 is pi over 4. Okay. I told you before, you should start with the sinusoidal. So the sinusoidal is down three. You must draw it in. You must draw in your sinusoidal and you must show four increments per cycle because the unit circle has four quadrants. So each cycle, a wave, whatever you want to call it, must have the four key increments. So if the if I'm going to be shifting right pi, I don't know if you saw me, but I counted one, two, three, four. And the reason I did that is because the period is pi over four. I'm sorry, that's not true. Let me go back. I counted four in, uh, increments to get to pi, and that's because the increments that I need are pi over four. So that matches pi divided by four is pi over four. Okay, so each interval is a fourth, so uh, pi plus pi over four is five pi over four, six pi over four, which is three pi over two. I should have spaced it out more. Uh, let's see, four, five, six, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four, which is two pi. My sinusoidal is at negative three, up four is one, down four is uh, negative seven, three, four, five, six. I just made it fit. Yeah, when you do your graphs, this should be spaced out nicer. You don't have to, but it's kind of hard to read otherwise, as you can see by the video. Okay, so uh, it is a sine curve. So I'm gonna start on the sinusoidal axis, and then I'm gonna go up to the high point, which is one. I'm gonna go back to the axis, which is at three pi over two. I am going to go down to negative seven and then back to two pi. And that is one wave. Let's just do a quick check. Pi to two pi is pi, which is what we said it should be. The length of the wave is pi and then that height is a total of eight. That's a total of eight. Half of eight, last time I checked, was four. And there you go. So we'll do one that's a little bit um, more complex, so that way when you do the homework, it will mirror what you need to do. So um, let's see something like y equals negative two 
times the cosine of 3 theta 2 pi. I'm trying to make one up that's nice. Hold on. 2 pi over 3, which would give me 3 pi over 6. Minus pi over 6. And then how about plus 1? Okay, I purposely put the plus 1 on the uh, end. doesn't matter where it is. Here is the key thing that you need to look at. B is the coefficient on theta. Every problem you've done so far, B has been factored out. You can factor out the three if you want. You don't have to. Well, how do you know? So B is three, B is the coefficient on theta. Whenever we do shifts, I've always asked you, what value of X makes the quantity equal to zero? Because that's gonna give you the shift. What value of X makes this zero? Well, guess what? If I set three theta minus pi over six, equal to zero, add pi over six to both sides, divide by three, and you get pi over 18. So theta is pi over 18. That means that this is a shift right pi over 18. Hopefully that matches up nicely with our period, but we shall see. A is negative, amplitude is not. A is negative, that's a reflection. The amplitude is still two. You can't have negative height, it doesn't exist. So A is negative, amplitude is positive. It's the absolute value. So my amplitude is two, and this is gonna tell me I'm gonna go up one. So my sinusoidal, in this case cosine, is at one. Well, you know it's right pi over 18, and that's what I did here. So the next um, question is, what's the period? So b is three, b is three. So the period is two pi over b, which is three. So the period is two pi over three. Okay, so that means that when I draw this reflected cosine curve, wherever it ends up, from low point up down to low point, that distance must be two pi over three. I'm gonna find my increments here, so pi over three. My increments are gonna be pi over six. Your shift is in eighteenths. Your intervals are in sixths. Common denominator between six and 18 is 18. It might be helpful for you to say, okay, this is the same thing as three pi over 18. Um, if that's a little bit confusing to you, it will, I hope, be, be clarified in just a second here. What are we doing? We're going up one, okay. All right, so up one, voila. Uh, and the amplitude is two, so two, two, and that's one. Okay, the shift is your starting point. The shift is right pi over 18. So my first increment is going to be pi over 18. Or you could start here with pi over 18, or here, it doesn't matter, but you just have to be consistent. Here's what I mean. If I make the first, uh, okay, not very mathematical. If my first line is an 18th, then my next line needs to be an 18th, and the next line needs to be an 18th. If I don't put pi over 18 until the sixth line, then the next six lines is another pi over 18, and six more lines is the pi over 18. So um, I think you know what I mean. If not, um, you can email me or send a reminder or come to office hours, which I will tell you when they are in case you didn't get your slate. Reflected cosine starts at the bottom. 
my increments are three pi over 18. So if it's one pi over 18, one, two, three. That's four pi over 18, which is two pi over nine. Three more eighteenths. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's seven pi over 18. I hope. One, two, 10 pi over 18. 10 pi over 18, five pi over nine. I can just imagine you're sitting at your kitchen table watching this. Miss Babiak, it's supposed to be seven pi over 16, not seven pi over 18. <laughs> I don't have anybody here to correct me, except for Portia, and I don't think her math skills are uh, all that great. Oh, I need one more. What was this? 10, 13 pi over 18. One, two, three. Oh, the first half started so nice. So how do you know if you're supposed to be in degrees or radians? Follow the format of the problem. Okay, so pi, radians, pi, radians. If instead this said 30 degrees, then I would use 30 degrees, which for most of you is a lot easier, I know, but in the real world, radians are gonna be much more, um, they're much more common. Office hours this week. So if you are confused, it's on the slate as well, but office hours are Wednesday at 11.30, and Thursday at 10.30. This video will help you with the all the remaining assignments for the week. Hope to see you guys at office hours.